Let's begin with the chanting. Pati Pano Bhagavatu Savitra 
संगो यदि दम चक्रतारी पुरिस युगानी अंधर पुरिस कुमला इस भगवतो साव प्रसंगो आहुने यो पाहुने यो दम कीने यो अंजली करनियो अनुत्तर रंग पुन्यात के तंदो कंसाति साधु 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 Let's take a couple of minutes to relax our body and calm the mind. Understanding your sitting posture, the way you are seated. Feel the surrounding, the peacefulness, the silence around you. Simply knowing that you are seated in this peaceful atmosphere. Taking a few deep inhalations and exhalations, some long, gentle and mindful breaths, releasing any tension and negative energies from your body, experiencing the each breath throughout the body, you may gently bring your total attention to your inner experience. Now being very friendly to yourself, being very gentle to yourself, as you feel the entire body with the mind, understanding the breathing process as you breathe in and out through the nostrils, as you breathe in and out in one circle, you may repeat May I be well, and so on. For each circle, you may repeat these loving, friendly thoughts and phrases again and again, incorporating the loving friendliness with your breathing experience.
feeling the deep sense of connectedness with your body and mind, accepting and appreciating for being who you are and what you are. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be relaxed. May I be peaceful. And you may take a few deep breaths again, refreshing your body and mind. So we can start the uh, Sutta discussion for today. Uh, so today I selected uh, this very popular uh, uh, discourse in the Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, the title of the discourse is Jata Sutta, Jata, the tangle. That's the meaning of Jata. Uh, is the tangle. Mm, you can uh, you can say it's entanglement. Mm. So that is the title of the discourse. Uh, let's see how it goes. At Savati, uh, when the Brahman Jata Bharatraja went to the Blessed One and on arrival exchanged courteous greetings with him. After this exchange of friendly greetings and courtesies, he sat on one side. As he was sitting there, he addressed the Blessed One with words. A tangle within, a tangle without. People are entangled in a tangle. Gautama, I ask you this, who can untangle this tangle? So this is the question uh, this person asks. So this, uh, this sutta comes in the uh, Devata Sanyutta. Uh, so this person uh, uh, is a deity, a god. Uh, so in, in the Buddha's daily routine, as we know, the midnight was dedicated to the divine beings. So uh, different divine beings uh, visited the Buddha during this time. Uh, the midnight, uh, as it explains in many discourses, illuminating the entire uh, space, entire area with the divine uh, radiance. Uh, so approaching the Buddha, um, after uh, paying respect uh, to the Buddha, they ask uh, these different questions, very interesting, uh, very practical questions sometimes, as we uh, commonly know the Mangala Sutta, right? Uh, the greatest blessings, uh, that is also uh, one of the occasions uh, a certain deity 
uh, visited the Buddha with this uh, very interesting practical question. Uh, so this is one of those occasions. Uh, but uh, this sutta, this question, uh, as it appears, uh, seems to be a uh, little bit philosophical, uh, and uh, you can see some deep dhamma there. Mm. Uh, I mentioned this, uh, first of all, uh, the Jatha Sutta to be very popular, you know, uh, as many uh, Buddhist people, uh, those who uh, uh, always uh, search for the Dhamma, study the Dhamma, uh, they especially pay attention to uh, this stanza. Mm. In Pali, you can see Anto Jata Bahi Jata, Jatai Jatita Paja. Tantan Gotama Puchami Ko Imam Vijitaye Jata. Uh, so let's try to understand what this uh, simply means. Uh, so, as it appears from the surface level, it sounds like uh, tangle within. That means uh, uh, it can mean a lot of things, right? That means uh, personally inside one can be confused or maybe lost. So, being complicated mm. uh, and uh, caught up in many uh, vicious things inside. Uh, uh, so you can understand that uh, that part, that meaning, you know, uh, maybe not to know what is exactly going on uh, within one's experience, you know, maybe the body and mind, the emotions, uh, basically, not to know what is the real ultimate meaning of the life. Basically, uh, the meaning of this body and mind and its experience uh, overall. And uh, a tangle without, uh, so outside also, which means you can refer that to the external world, other people around you, society, uh, you know, everybody is also confused or lasting uh, their way of life or not knowing uh, what is exactly happening around, uh, you know, uh, not knowing what is good and bad, what is right and wrong, spiritual or wholesome or unwholesome. So having no clue, having no idea, uh, they remain confused. Uh, so that is the uh, meaning in the second line, Bahijaka. Uh, that means there are problems outside as well, problems within, problems outside as well. Mm. And then this uh, mm. daily as the Buddha, people are entangled in a tangle. So within these two realities, within these two uh, uh, dimensions, or within these two uh, aspects, people are uh, entangled. Uh, you know, hugely, you know, uh, they have become very complicated, confused, you know, as they, as we uh, uh, interact with the external world, right, this is where these two realities, two aspects come in contact with, right, internal and external. Mm. So, in the Buddhist teachings, we uh, mainly understand this point, right, uh, some in some places like uh, if you can remember the four foundations of mindfulness these two distinct uh, aspects are mentioned ajyat bahidhava right ajyat is the internal <coughs> bahidhava is the external uh, this aspect is very essential in the teachings why our overall personal life experience everyday experience is always shared with the internal experience and the external uh, reality. So we know how that connection is made, right? Uh, the internal experiences uh, are related to our, what? Six senses, right? Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and the mind. Six senses. Uh, and uh, they are the sense bases and uh, different sense objects are uh, sensitive to these uh, five faculties. 
forms, sounds, uh, smell, the taste, touch, and the thoughts as the Dhamma, right? Rupa, Sattva, Gandha, Rasa, Sparsha, Potthamba, and Dhamma. So this is how uh, in Pali they are explained. So this is, uh, this is uh, what eventually uh, getting in contact with as we experience this external world. So as we can see, all our life experience uh, can be explained in this uh, reality, no matter what. In this world, in this society, in this universe, if anything to be a part of your experience, what has to happen? They have to go through these senses. So when Buddha discovered, he, uh, when he realized this ultimate truth, basically the Four Noble Truths, uh, eventually how to end all the suffering, he very importantly understood the importance of understanding this uh, communication this process of communication with the external uh, world, uh, with internal sense faculties. This is where all our personal experiences are uh, made. Mm. So we can see that all other happiness, suffering, whatever you call it, tension, anxieties, worries, depression, everything can be uh, explained uh, within these uh, two realities, two conditions internal and external, right? So when we are to learn uh, the process of overcoming or controlling our personal suffering in our everyday life, this understanding is very essential. Mm -hmm. And even in the Dhamma, it clearly explains where we make the mistake in this process, right? We know that uh, within this communication with the external world, uh, along with our uh, internal sense faculties, uh, there are so many things involved. It's not just one single condition. Many things are involved there, right? When we come to uh, the mechanism of that process, we learn how our uh, most superficial uh, sensory experiences, sense faculties, sense organs, and uh, our brain, the neural activities, the hormones, uh, our blood system, uh, how everything is involved there. To give us a one certain particular experience, everything has to be involved. And uh, along with that process, we learn the consciousness as a, a very unique uh, part of this experience, right? How we perceive things, how we interpret things, how we interpret this uh, external reality within our personal experience, right? Uh, and uh, there's a very ine inevitable part of uh, memory getting involved at, uh, in that process, right? We always compare with our previous experiences, uh, with present experience. So this is how this process is explained in the Dhamma, either for us to uh, be happy uh, or unhappy. So this is a very unique uh, personal experience. Mm. So one single experience can be totally different for two individuals, depending on that process, right? So this is exactly uh, where this deity is uh, talking about, addressing about, right? Uh, we have to uh, clearly see that when it is uh, superficially um, taken, you can see that there's a problem within me, there are, there are problems within others as we interact with the world. Okay, This is what basically uh, people understand when they listen to this very first stanza, Gata. Okay, But when you take a look at the uh, next verses or the Buddha's answer to this particular unique question, we can see that it is not really uh, this superficial level of talking uh, this deity uh, is asking from the Buddha, okay? Uh, so the very first stanza is very important, therefore, to understand its meaning. Uh, so Buddha's answer to that question, the, the first uh, stanza, 
the man established in virtue, discerning, developing discernment and mind. The monk ardent, astute, he can untangle this tangle. So there is to say, Sile Padikthai Naru Sapanyo Chittam Panyanch Bhavya Atapi Vipako Bhikku So Imam Vijate Jata. So that is the first answer to this question from the Buddha. Sile Padikthai Naru Sapanyo. Uh, the meaning starts with Sapanyo. Sapanyo means uh, the person who understands this problem. Hmm. So it implies actually how one starts this journey, right? Opening up one's eye, hmm. one's eyes, you know, uh, looking around, you know, looking at their personal life or taking uh, the meaning of entire life into consideration, you know, basically and asking this question, what is exactly happening here? What are we doing in our life? What is the purpose of this life, right? This is how uh, many people start their spiritual journey, right? Maybe this is how you came to this place in the beginning, <laughs> right? People are curious about these things. So uh, this is exactly what comes in the very first place of the Noble Eightfold Path, which is the Samma Bhikti, right perspective, right view, right? That is exactly uh, being uh, very intelligent, being smart, being wise. Mm? This is how uh, one starts this spiritual journey, this investigation, this practice. Uh, so that is the meaning of Sapanya. That means we can do this process without any clue, any understanding, right? It doesn't happen that way. Uh, that means we have a purpose for this practice. Mm? Basically, to end our suffering, to end all the suffering, unnecessary negativities in our life, and to uh, experience the real uh, inner peace and happiness. So that is the intention of uh, an intelligent, wise person in this journey. So that person, understanding the problem, okay, understanding the suffering in life, uh, that person understands uh, the importance of uh, the virtue. And this is where we learn the direct teachings or the direct answer in a way uh, for this problem as it explains in the normal Eightfold Path, Sila, Samadhi and Panya, the moral discipline, uh, the cultivation of the mind which is the Samadhi, uh, that is basically to control our uh, emotional agitations or what we basically technically understand as the five hindrances to control or uh, suppress our uh, five hindrances, uh, basic uh, distractions in a meditative practice, which is the Samadhi practice. And uh, the practice of uh, Panya, which is uh, the right understanding. Mm -hmm. The deep investigation, uh, what we understand as the vipassana, the insight uh, practice. Okay, so the person who cultivates these uh, qualities, okay, a monk, ardent and astute, atapi nipako bhikkhu. Atapi, the uh, word atapi means uh, the person who strives on diligence to. Uh, control the internal mental impurities. Mm -hmm. So, as we uh, basically understand, uh, the cause of our suffering is the mental impurities. We call them the kilesa in Pali. Mm -hmm. Mental impurities, corrupted mind, negative emotions. These are the conditions that bring us uh, suffering, tension and anxieties into our life experience. So the person who has the intention to uh, control or completely let go of these negative conditions, mental impurities, uh, nipako means being very smart, being very intelligent in controlling that process, you know, knowing the problem, knowing the answer, knowing the proper techniques uh, uh, 
at a given time according to what they are going through, what we are going through in our everyday life. So that is being so smart. Uh, so that type of characteristics are needed uh, in this journey, in the cultivation of this Sila Samadhi and Panya. He cannot untangle this tangle. Uh, that is the person who can untangle this entanglement. Mm. Uh, so the entanglement, uh, the word entanglement, I have not actually given you the proper impression here. I feel that the entanglement means just like a ball of a string that, that has been very complicated, you know, not knowing how to uh, find the beginning or the end of it. This is exactly uh, the meaning of it, the entanglement, you know. But the even uh, explains that not only taking this very uh, life experience that we can see, what we can feel, what we can touch, but taking into consideration of the entire journey of samsara, even the existence, you know, this uh, vicious circle of birth and death, you know, uh, being born into different states, uh, lives again and again, you know, uh, in the process of uh, the karma. Uh, so people, all beings are kind of lusting this endless journey. So that is exactly the impression, the meaning of entanglement, you know. Uh, so such a person can untangle this type of entanglement, which is a systematic training, a systematic spiritual uh, cultivation with the Sila, Samadhi and Panya. This is the precise, uh, direct path to the total purification, uh, ending of all the suffering. Okay. And then with the continuous even, Yesam Ragocha Dosocha Avidyacha Virajita. So that is kind of going into a deeper level. So this is why I mentioned that this this is not simply talking about this external world, you know. This is something exactly uh, to do with our personal experience, or basically what is happening within our psychophysical experience, within our body and mind, or basically to say within our five aggregates, Nama and Rupa. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what Buddha uh, is talking about here. Those whose passion, aversion, and ignorance have faded away. Mm -hmm. uh, when someone, uh, ragocha, ragocha means the passion, the desire, emotional attachment to conditions, mm -hmm. and uh, aversion, the opposite, the anger, uh, and ignorance. So, these are the, the very common root causes of all mental impurities, as we can uh, remember, as we learn in the Dhamma. Uh, raga, dosa, and moha. Passion, aversion, and ignorance. The root causes of all uh, negativities, mental impurities. You know. Uh, so, this is what we uh, completely eradicate in the process of purification of the mind in order to end all the suffering. Mm. So if when we basically understand our mental impurities are the causes for our suffering uh, or negativities, the answer is then the total purification of these mental impurities, which can bring us the uh, spiritual happiness and harmony, the peace and tranquility, right? That's the direct uh, answer uh, of the Buddha's uh, the spiritual practice. Uh, so when all these mental impurities are totally faded away, uh, gone away, that they never come back to uh, us. And those are called the Arahants, the total enlightened ones, right? The ones who have attained that total purification. Uh, Arahanto. So they are the ones uh, who have attained those total purification. Mm -hmm. Kinasava means uh, those who have ended 
all mental impurities. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that it is not just the superficial level of these mental impurities. As we learn in the Dhamma, there are uh, hidden tendencies also, right? We have to uh, remember that. Uh, that means we, uh, we call them the Anuse. That means there are subtle tendencies uh, within our mind, our consciousness, our life that are not uh, practically seen or can be seen in the superficial level. Where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? From our long-term experience. As a result of uh, traveling through this existence for long, 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 long time. So we have been cultivating, we have been practicing, enjoying all these mental impurities so far. So these tendencies are hidden inside that we cannot even simply see them. They are called the anusayas. Okay, so they cannot be seen easily. So this is exactly what uh, Buddha uh, pays a special attention to, even though we can see that, uh, hey, I don't get angry. I don't have this uh, and that uh, mental impurity, right? In the superficial level, sometimes we can see that. Even this is a very common question uh, many people ask even, you know, uh, suppose, uh, um, very controversial question many people ask nowadays, you know, when they learn these kind of teachings. Uh, what happens to a person who suddenly dies? You know, suppose it's a sudden death, uh, an emergency uh, situation, right? Uh, the way they explain is that there's no even time to have a thought <laughs> or any, uh, pay attention to any experience or to have any of these conditions like passion you know, these uh, complicated emotions or whatever. So what would be the uh, rebirth process for such a person? Mm -hmm. So the answer is that, that they still have these hidden tendencies in them mm -hmm. for a long time as they have uh, carried through this existence. So they have not been purified. They have not completely eradicated yet. The, in the Anusay levels, the hidden tendencies. Mm -hmm. So in the teachings, uh, as far as the Buddha's uh, precise training, uh, spiritual practice, these techniques are concerned, uh, as a result of the deep analysis, uh, deep investigation, uh, digging into even the into the root levels of these mental impurities, our personal experience. This is where even these hidden tendencies are going to be eradicated. Okay. That is exactly the purpose of insight meditation, vipassana we call. It is not just the superficial level of uh, purification, right? So we can uh, get an idea what kind of uh, serious practice this is, right? It's not simple, uh, but uh, it is very important to understand that we start from the surface level first. That is how the gradual training process is uh, taking place, right? One may not be able to get into that deeper, most subtle level of uh, this practice. That's why uh, the systematic training, gradual practice is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the meaning of uh, the second words, okay? And then Buddha goes into even more detail, a uh, very deeper level of this explanation, where name and form, along with perception of impingement and form, totally stop without trace. That's where the tangle is cut. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly uh, talking about this uh, deeper level of our personal experience, uh, going into a very subtle level. So as you can see, yatta namancha rupancha asesan uparujyati patitan rupa sanyacha ittesa chijyate jata. This is where this 
uh, ultimate entanglement is going to uh, disentangle it. Mm -hmm. Where names, name and form along with perception. So this is exactly uh, where and how Buddha explains about the reality of this Nama and Rupa. Mm -hmm. uh, name and form. Uh, it, it does not give actually the real meaning here when you say <laughs> the name and form. You know, Nama and Rupa. This is a very uh, precise, uh, deep way of analyzing this personal experience along with the body and mind. Okay. Uh, let's try to understand this uh, name and form. Okay. So, form is the, uh, the physical conditions, physical reality, as we can see, made from, uh, made out of uh, uh, what we call the Satra Mahabud Patavi Apu Tejuvari, the solidity, fluidity, uh, heat, and air. So these are the very basic fundamental conditions of uh, this physical reality. Uh, even when you understand, when you try to understand uh, the ultimate reality of the physical form, physical body, uh, and what we perceive in the external world as physical objects. All these realities are made out of these four basic elements. The common nature of these four basic elements uh, is that they can never be separated. Even though we explain, even though we understand these basic uh, fundamental conditions, physical conditions, individually, they always work together or they exist together. Okay? Like if you take the water for an example, okay, uh, it is basically the fluidity, right? But it has all other components in it. Why you can touch it? Because of the physical conditions, the patavi, the solidity, right? Why it moves? Because of that uh, air component in it. Mm. Uh, and of course, it has a temperature. Mm. So we can see that in any single physical object, all these four basic elements are existing, but mostly one of these conditions are prominent in all these objects. In the water, in the example, the fluidity is being more prominent. In the air, uh, still uh, the air condition has been uh, more prominent. If you take the diamond, the solidity being the more prominent basic element, like that. So in the teachings, it explains even in the light rays, in the light, even in the light, uh, you can find these four basic elements, as it explains in the Abhidhamma, deep Dhamma, right? In all these physical realities, conditions, these uh, four basic elements are there, okay? So this is what we basically uh, make the connection with, with the external world, through our senses, right? Uh, so these are the forms, uh, and uh, this is only one aspect to the rupa or the form. Okay, but according to this uh, sutta, in this particular uh, analysis or explanation by the Buddha, it talks about the forms that that are being created in our brain, in our mind in our conscious awareness. How do you understand that point? Hmm? This is very interesting, very beautiful thing to understand in the Dhamma. Hmm? This is so fascinating, you know. When you uh, talk about experiencing this external world within your psychophysical experience, okay? Even though you see these beautiful uh, objects outside, what do actually creates this reality for you? Your mind. Your mind, or you may call it even the brain, right? These forms are basically eventually uh, reflected in our brain, 
in our conscious awareness. This is exactly the form this stanza is talking about. The rupa, the form. Okay? Another explanation is that basic four conditions, uh, four basic elements of uh, how things are made out of, uh, you know, in the external and internal uh, experience. When you talk about the body and physical objects. But uh, when we explain our personal experience, you know, what we are going through, you know, what we are exactly eventually dealing with is the forms that are being created in our system, in our brain. So we know that process. Uh, in different discourses, this process is clearly explained by the Buddha. You know, what it means to uh, experience this external world or how it eventually happens to you. Mm -hmm. And that is where I uh, mentioned in the beginning that how so many different conditions are uh, coming together to create that image for you in your brain, right? To basically uh, to say that when you say when you see this object in your hand as an external object to give you this personal experience for you of a ball, we we know that we have to understand that this particular object does not enter your eye physically. <laughs> right? To give you that experience. But very importantly, we have to understand that this is a spiritual experience here. That means this object does not enter your eye and give you this experience to you. But it is nothing but the signals or the light waves that enters your eye. And these signals are taken into your brain. To the visual cortex where it creates this image for you. But this is exactly what you are dealing with, not with this external world now anymore. Right? This is exactly the form it talks about here. It's very interesting, it can be complicated, but this is exactly technically what it talks about. Okay? So eventually, all our experience with the form, sounds, smell, uh, taste, the touch, and the thoughts. All these images are eventually created in our brain, in our conscious awareness. This is the rope, this is the form that we are dealing with eventually. Developing attachment or the craving, the passion, or the aversion, the opposite to it depending on our previous experiences, okay? Uh, so in that process, in the Dhamma, it explains the, with the communication with this uh, form reality, uh, the sensation is created. Uh, based on the form, we gain the physical touch, patipasanya, we call it. Based on the Rupakaya uh, Patikasanya, that means based on these physical conditions, physical reality, we, we gain the physical touch or the experience of the object, of the form. Okay? And then comes the Nama part, which is the uh, um, uh, the name. Nama is the name. Okay. Nama is what you give to this form or how you identify this object which is being created in your brain. It would not make any sense to you if you do not ident identify it. How do you identify that? Giving it a name, of course. Giving it a name. Giving it an identification. Uh, this is a very important part of the realization here. And this is how even maybe we give a meaning to this external reality. 
Can you imagine if we did not, if we did not have a language, if we did, did not have any vocabulary to explain what we see, what we hear, or feel, touch? What do you think <laughs> our experience would be, even our communication, right? We don't know how to interpret that. Mm -hmm. So it has a very uh, big part of the evolution of human experience, human brain, uh, personally, right? That's the development of uh, the language, uh, our words, the communication, mm -hmm. and uh, it is said in the Dhamma, Namakaye Adivachan. Uh, that means uh, from the name part, uh, we develop this identification. We give them a name. This is how we identify this reality. Namakai mm Adivachan. -hmm. Uh, that is the reality. So now we can see uh, what exactly and how we deal with this name and form. Mm -hmm. Having these objects created in our system within cybernetical entity and giving them a name, identification. Uh, so we can technically see that how these two realities, two dimensions are connected to our personal experience eventually. Developing all these emotions, cravings, happiness, or suffering, uh, depending on how we interpret it. Mm. So this is where Buddha technically uh, addressing uh, this process and where it has to be completely corrected or untangled uh, or sorted out in the process of overcoming uh, the ignorance uh, for suffering. Mm -hmm. So where name and forms along with perception. So uh, the perception is the uh, ident identification, understanding, mm -hmm. perceiving uh, the reality along with the name and form. Right? Uh, and then, Asesam Uparujya, that means uh, when this name and form are completely uh, uprooted mm -hmm. in the process of uh, this spiritual journey, as we will learn, the uh, Buddha's uh, very basic fundamental teaching of the dependent origination, if you can remember. Mm -hmm. The Nama Rupa uh, are coming in the very first uh, uh, part of that process, mm -hmm. dependent origination, the Paditya Samupada, mm -hmm. uh, starting from the ignorance. Mm -hmm. It gives the uh, rise to uh, the consciousness and from the consciousness that arise the name and form because of the vinyan because of the consciousness uh, these two realities are taking place two experiences are taking place name and form mm -hmm. so in order to uh, understand uh, how and what is this final liberation or end of suffering is explained in the Dhamma, it is the, uh, the death of consciousness. Mm. End of consciousness, the vinyana. Vinyana sadhirodhi, it says in the Dhamma. The ending of all the suffering uh, is achieved, uh, ending our consciousness. Mm. So that is the final uh, death you mean call it the final liberation that means there's no more suffering to that uh, consciousness to that vinya mm -hmm. uh, so when the name and form are completely eradicated uh, so this is as we can see that these kind of states cannot be achieved in a very superficial level of experience this is what we, have, we can basically understand these levels are completely uh, in absorption levels or jhana levels, nothing to do with this superficial practice or rituals or whatever. They are highly spiritual 
developed process or levels in this spiritual journey. Okay? Uh, so we can see that how uh, serious, how uh, subtle, and how deep these levels uh, in the practice to achieve these points, right? And that is where the tangle is cut. So this is exactly, basically, technically the place where this entanglement is going to cut or completely end. Okay. So that is the Buddha's answer to that particular question how to untangle the entanglement. So we can directly see that. This has nothing to do with the external world. Basically, solving the problem inside, within our personal experience, how we integrate our life experiences. Mm. But here, it is in a very deeper the spiritual level, mm. as we can see how it goes into a deeper levels, as Buddha explains. So then, hearing these words, these teachings, when this was said, the Brahman uh, uh, Bharadwaja said to the Blessed One, magnificent, Master Gautama, magnificent, just as if he were to place upright what was overturned, or to reveal what was hidden, to show the way to one who was lost, or to carry a lamp into the dark so that those who uh, those with eyes could see forms in the same way as Master Gautama, through many lines of reason, made the Dhamma clear. I go to the Blessed One for refuge, to the Dhamma and the community of monks, the Sangha. Let me obtain the going forth in Master Gautama's presence. Let me obtain admission. So we can see how he. Uh, understood the Buddha's answer, you know, as he came with this very deep question, he completely understood uh, the Buddha's uh, point, his explanation, and he developed then the interest of entering into this spiritual practice, spiritual path, mm -hmm. and uh, asking him to uh, accept him as a disciple of the Buddha. Mm -hmm. And uh, after his teachings, uh, he understood the Buddha's teachings completely and attained enlightenment after a very short time. So this is uh, the Jata Sutta. This is a very uh, philosophical but uh, very meaningful uh, uh, part of the teachings. The Jata Sutta, the Tanka. Uh, do you have any question or comment? Any, any thought? <laughs> yes. I remember that you said the first line mm -hmm. in the second part of the passage. Yep. Uh, the discernment mm -hmm. was about opening the eye mm -hmm. of Dhamma. Yes. Is this, are each of the lines here about the four kinds of people? Four kinds of people? The four kinds of nobles? Mm, it doesn't say exactly, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, according to uh, the teachings we can see that this is how one should start the journey, you know, with right discernment, right understanding, right perspective to life. Mm -hmm. So basically, understanding the problem in everyday life, you know, wanting to find the solution, answer uh, to the practical problem. Uh, so that has to uh, start with the right perspective right understanding. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, we talk about these three qualities, the spiritual qualities, uh, uh, to be cultivated to the highest level, to the perfection level, see the samadhi and panya at the same time. We begin the path with the wisdom and we end the path with the perfect ultimate wisdom as well. That is where we completely understand the Four Noble Truths the entire process. 
right? That's why that, uh, that idea, uh, the discernment, uh, is mentioned in several places with different meanings, okay? Any other question? Any other thought? No. So this is a good, good knowledge uh, according to the Dhamma as we try to learn something uh, important uh, and something related to our very personal uh, spiritual path, practice and this is where we are getting it eventually, right? So it's always good to have some clue, some uh, idea, you know. Uh, and we can then simply relate to these points uh, as we practice meditation, as we practice other spiritual qualities uh, along the journey, you know. Okay? All right, so that will be all for tonight. Um, thank you very much. All the blessings to you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.